so I can divide it. <laughs> there goes the microphone. Too much hand waving. We are using parallel DML to speed up a large merge command into a partition table. However, it is locking the entire table as a result. Can this be avoided? And we'll do a demo here. The key thing here is there is a subtle difference when it comes to table versus partition level locking, depending on how you phrase your DML. So we're going to do a little demo here to show you uh, some of the things you can do to make sure you can maximize the availability of your table if it's partitioned while you're doing DML. Okay, I'm going to create a table called T. I'm going to partition by list automatic because I'm just a lazy typist. And I'm simply taking a copy of DBA objects with this extra column called X, which is the modulo of 10. So as you can imagine, it's going to have 10 distinct values and I'm going to partition by each of these. So I've got zero through nine for my values of X. And that gives me a 10 or 11 partitions here because X could be null as well. Effectively, my automatically generated partitions for my table. Uh, X equals one gives me a partition, X equals zero gives me a partition and so forth. I'm going to have another table called T1, which is partitioned almost identically, except the values will be tenfold. So the distinct values are 0, 10, 20, etc. just so it looks a little bit different. But same thing, 10 partitions in here. Once again, automatically list partitioned. One of these is my source, one of these is my target, and I'm going to do a merge command. Here's the problem that was being encountered. I'm doing a merge here on just one particular partition, and I'm doing it with parallel DML because that lets us consume lots of resource on our server. Uh, just by the way, if, if you're unfamiliar with this, uh, or unaware that this hint existed, many people who have been working with the database for a long time worked under the premise that if you wanted to do parallel DML, you had to do alter session enable parallel DML. You can do it and at a statement by statement level now with a hint. So I can say for this particular statement, I actually want to enable parallel DML and I want to do it parallel too. I actually didn't need uh, these in here as well, but I'm just a cut paste lazy person. But as you can see, I'm taking all the rows from T1 for X equals 10, that'll be the one single partition, and merging it into T for X equals one, which will also be a single partition, and I'm just doing a simple update here. Similarly, if I try then do another merge for a different partition, this is the second partition with the second partition another source, I get an error. With parallel DML, as we know, you can only do one, and then you must end the transaction. So if I want to do these, then I've got a problem because I can only do one at a time and I have to end the transaction each time. Can we do better? I'll commit it to free up all that stuff. Let's now dig into perhaps how the optimizer is running these merge statements. So if I look at the access, the, the source data, or that the target was T, if I look for just the partition one, does the optimizer know just from that select star statement that I'm accessing just one partition? And as we can see, it does. It says I'm doing a partition list single, and that partition is partition number five in this case. If I do from T1, this was the merge source as opposed to the merge target for X equals 10, same thing. The optimizer knows just from that that yes, I'm once again just accessing the fifth partition. So it knows this. So it knows that in both cases, both the source and the target are simply accessing a single partition. But if I ask it to explain the actual merge, which once again is, yep, we know that's one partition. We know that's one partition. It's there almost. It says, yes, I'm doing a single partition, but notice we've lost access to knowing in advance what that partition is. But it still knows that, you know, it's definitely going to be a one partition joined between these two objects. I just don't know them at parsing time. It says it's a key provided. What if I do it in parallel, which is the desired command here? Now we've got partition this single here, but it's dropped off here. Now we still have this partition start and stop being a key. But you sort of have this inclination here that as we've added more complexity, the parallel stuff as well, we're starting to sort of um, lose a little bit of the partition known in advance. Let's explore why. As we saw, if I want to do multiple partitions, I have to end the transaction with one before I can do the other. A logical extension that would be, let's do each of the various partitions in multiple sessions so I can divide it. <laughs> there goes the microphone too much hand waving. I want to get this economies of scale of doing mergers on multiple partitions, and I can't do it in a single session. Maybe I'll run multiple sessions, each one doing a particular partition. So in this case, I've got partition, the first partition where X equals one, and then I go to session number two, and I'm gonna try 
do the second partition. So as we saw, these two things are accessing totally separate partitions, yet notice this one is stuck. This one has locked the entire table, even though we know that both these operations are a single partition only. That's frustrating. So I'll commit that so we can actually see that this one has now been freed up, but we'd like to do better. Here's the way you can achieve it. I don't know why the optimizer can't do this by itself, but it's just an unfortunate restriction. So here's how we can solve it ourselves. In this case, it's the exact same merge. Rather than using a predicate, I'm going to explicitly nominate that partition, which means I have some extra work to do as a developer. I would need to take my values and work out what the partition is and then explicitly code it, probably with dynamic SQL. For this I'm saying, go get the partition for the value of x equals 1. And I go over here and I say, let's go get the partition for the value of x equals 2. And notice it was not stopped. When I explicitly nominate the partitions, then I actually get this benefit of being able to do multiple merges, each on disparate partitions on the table. So if I had 20 partitions to merge, I could have 20 sessions, for example, with a job scheduler, and it would go ahead and do them all concurrently and get all the value that I need. If I go back to session one and commit and we're done. Interestingly, you'll think, well, Seeing as that worked, if I do an explain plan on this explicitly nominated partition, I'll see better information inside the explain plan. But in fact, I see the identical explain plan from before. It says I've got a single partition on the source, but nothing that tells me I'm doing a single partition on the target. So the explain plan didn't give me any clues that the actual facility using explicit partition naming was going to be actually better. So as I'm saying, some care is needed and just looking at the explain plan might not be enough to know that you'd be able to actually get these concurrent mergers running for different partitions.